seem to know much more about him than we do. Just that his name's Joe Santiago, and he's reputed to be Alan Forbes' number three man, a real heavyweight. Thanks. According to immigration, he's never been in the country before. Any previous arrests? Not even a parking ticket. What about pictures? According to my informant, he's very camera shy. Well, the one thing we do know is that Alan Forbes runs every illegal operation in the Bahamas. He's sending his number three man here. It must be for something pretty important. I want to find out what it is. They're coming through now. Let's see what our Mr. Santiago looks like.
sir. become big fish. been saying that ever since she started regaining consciousness. There's nothing on the guy who hit Santiago, boss. Just another citizen in a hurry to catch a plane? All right. We're holding him now. He's with his attorney. Okay. Cool satin, misty dawn, Alexandria, but no black orchid. You didn't really think it was the name of a perfume. You'd be surprised at what's important to a woman. I spoke to Hanson at the Treasury Department. You're right about the $10 bill. It's counterfeit. It would take an expert to spot it, though. He said it's one of the best he's ever seen. I wonder how many more there are like it. Well, I get a feeling this is just a sample. Show how good the plates are. See what kind of a deal they can make for it. Any idea who the customer could be? Even if I did, which I don't, I don't think there was much good now. Once Joe Santiago fails to establish contact, Forbes will simply send another courier with another sample. Only this time we might not be there waiting for him. Sometimes the best laid schemes of mice and men go down the drain. There might be another way. How's that? Well, how much do we know about Joe Santiago? Mm. About enough to put in the eye of a needle and still leave room for the thread. But we know where she buys her clothes, we know her taste in perfumes, cosmetics, the color of her lipstick, her nail polish, and according to her itinerary, we even know she has reservations at the Stanley Terrace Hotel. So, what are you getting at? Let me take her place. Oh, forget it. Matt, you said it yourself. Alan Forbes' organization has been draining a lot of decent people dry for a very long time. I'd like to do something about that. Look, Santiago and I are about the same height, same weight, and, in case you haven't noticed, even the same color. Sammy Davis Jr. is the same color. That doesn't mean he can pass for Joe Santiago. Suppose someone is going to meet her at the hotel, like a, a relative or a boyfriend. Anybody who knows the real Santiago is not going to make contact with me. He'll pull back into the woodwork. But if someone does make contact, then we're in business. You know, I, I think she's right, Lieutenant. And then once she gets on the inside, she'll be able to find out who Santiago's here to deal with and how they intend to set up the operation. That's too risky. Too many things go wrong. Who said it wouldn't be risky? But I think it's worth it, Matt. <laughs> once those plates arrive, they could have $10 million on the streets in a matter of days, and that's just the beginning. You really think you can pull this off? I'm sure willing to give it a try. 
All right, Miss Santiago. Let's go to work. All right, one more time from the top. Uh, my name is Joe Santiago. I'm 26 years old. I was born in Elizabethville, 15 miles south of Nassau. Father's name? Emilio Santiago. Died 1968. Where? Had an accident in the tobacco fields where he worked. Native language? English, Lieutenant, with a slight West Indian accent. What about Arcadia Negra? That's Spanish. I don't know. Maybe some kind of code. And maybe it isn't. What's your father's name? Emilio Santiago, 1968, he died. Where? In the tobacco fields where he worked. Your mother? Georgette Adams, maiden name. Georgette Adams uh, married my father in 1938. He had four children. One of them died at birth. I have two older brothers, A.D. and Manny. Christy? Come on. You're dead. My name is Joe Santiago, and I'm here as a representative of the Forbes organization. And Matt, you should know better than anybody else, I never make the same mistake twice. Well, in this case, once is going to be more than enough. My passport, please. information on Joe Santiago. If we do, we'll get it to you some way. Don't ask me how. What is it, Christy? It's a picture of the child. It still bothers me, you know. Well, we know she was divorced. Maybe it's her kid. Well, they sure a resemblance, all right. But you wouldn't want to count on it. Nope, I sure wouldn't. Reservation for Miss Santiago? Oh, yes, Miss Santiago. Room 1011. Enjoy your stay, Miss Santiago. Thank you. lost a piece of my luggage. It takes time to try and find it. Mobile operator. Caribbean Airlines, please.
baggage department, please. Baggage claims, Johnson speaking. Yeah, hello, I'm checking out a piece of luggage that was lost on flight 126 from Nassau. The name, please. It's Joe Santiago. I'm sorry, sir, we still haven't been able to locate Miss Santiago's bag. But I'm sure it'll turn up. Would you check back with us later? Sure will. Thank you. I was only doing 55, officer. I didn't pull you over for speeding. I noticed your brake lights are out. My brake lights? You sure? Take a look for yourself. I'll step on the brake for you. Put on a break? Sure do. They're on. What did you do? Just hit the pedal again. They still on? Yeah. It's a short or something. Uh, you better have a check. First thing, officer. Thank you. They'd have something better to do with their time. All the better for us, they don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were we talking about? How beautiful Nassau is. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I was asking you if you had any children. No. I love children, but I have none. However, there is a nephew. His name is Mark. Beautiful, isn't he? Your kid. We'll be there soon, Miss Santiago.
was a mix-up in her back, and she's all right. Miss Santiago, I'm Lloyd Keegan. Mr. Keegan? No, no, you call me Lloyd. If you call me Joe. That's going to be easy. Is this what you Americans mean by roughing it? <laughs> yes, the easy way. Why don't you have a seat? Thank you. What are you drinking? How about some juice? I've heard so much about your California oranges. That's because we import them all the way from Florida. I think I'll join you. Should we drink to? Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> you don't waste time. And I didn't come this far for a glass of orange juice either. Do you have the sample with you? Right here. It's not bad. That's not bad at all. Lloyd, kicking the tires isn't going to get the price down. <laughs> now I know why Alan Forbes hired you for this job. That's good, Joe. Charles likes a horse trader. Doesn't trust anything that comes easy. And above all, we want him to trust us, don't we, Joe? Sure. What's friendship without trust? I can't argue that. I guess you want to meet the old man as soon as possible. I've been waiting to do that ever since I arrived. Okay, I'll set it up. We're in business. doing with the Philadelphia people? Good, Mr. Lucas. And the New Jersey organization's one in, too. When we have those plates, they'll all be begging for a piece of the action. I like that, Ken. It's a good way to do business. You must be Miss Santiago. I'm Charles Lucas. Please, sit down. You look into those other things we talked about, Ken. Right away, Mr. Lucas. My friend Alan Forbes has the right idea. Surround yourself with beauty and your day becomes a little happier. You better watch out, Lloyd. I'm not too old to change my ways. There's plenty of room for everyone, Charles. <laughs> I suppose you're right. I see you like flowers, Miss Santiago. Yes. I assume you love roses. Yes. Of course, there is a favorite. Orchidea Negra, the black orchid. In our business, you live to enjoy old age only by being cautious. Lloyd tells me the sample looks very good. Perfect is a better word. You mean a more expensive word? It's a dying art, Mr. Lucas. And what is this uh, dying art going to cost me? A million dollars and 20% of the action. Let me think about it. It's bad to talk business on an empty stomach. And uh, now that I've met you, Joe, 
Perhaps we can find a more private place to uh, continue with our negotiations. What would you like to eat? Your favorite dish, Mr. Lucas. Now, that's a smart girl. Would you excuse me, please? Of course. Get that bum out of here. I can get it. Thank you. Can you can you get it? Thank you very much. Hey, get out of here and stay out. I think Lucas is our man. I don't know what plans he's made for getting the plates into the country yet, but I think it's worth my sticking around to find out. Don't take any unnecessary chances. No, would I do a thing like that, huh? Thank you for your help, sir. You're welcome. I won't be long. Your call to San Francisco, Mr. Lucas. Oh, thank you. Hello, Frank. Hello, Charles. How's it going? <laughs> Can't complain. I uh, think we might be able to do some business. Oh, that sample from the Bahamas? It arrived today. It's good, Frank. The best. Who brought it in? <laughs> you won't be disappointed in her either. Santiago. Joe, well. Ah, you know her? Yeah, we met in the Bahamas. Became very good friends. Okay, Charles. I'll be down for sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I'm more convinced than ever that Forbes made the right choice. He didn't get where he is by making the wrong ones. That's right, Joe. And I guess he knows about Charles' weakness for a beautiful woman. That and wanting those plates are going to get the old man to drop his guard. And once he does, he's all yours. That's the way I like it. Decided what you're going to use yet, Joe? I always use what's right for the occasion. Can I suggest a 32 caliber automatic Beretta? It's lightweight, easy to conceal, deadly. The perfect weapon for you to kill Charles Lucas with. Oh. The old man will be expecting you up at his estate later this afternoon. To continue the negotiations. So that's what he meant by a more private place. It couldn't have worked out better. Don't worry about it, Joe. You'll be with him just long enough to pull the trigger. You know, there's something I've been curious about. What's that? Why me? Why not one of your own men? Or are you an army of one, Lloyd? No. Except for two or three of Charles's most trusted soldiers, the others are all with me. But if one of my men pulled the trigger, it could start a war between all the organizations that could end up destroying us all. And if I pull it, the blame falls on Forbes, in neutral territory. That's right. Forbes has everything to gain and nothing to lose. He's always wanted a piece of the drug action. The old man would never give it to him. I'm a lot more generous. The king is dead. Long live the king. You got the picture, Joe. Come on, we don't want to keep his majesty waiting.
Yeah. 10 William 10 to 5 Baker 2. 5 Baker 2 to 10 William 10 over. I should be coming out of the drive. I got him, Lieutenant. They're heading south on Beachwood Canyon. I'm gone. Has it ever occurred to you that I might have a stake in this, too? You mean the place? Yeah, I figure Forbes might have promised you a piece of that action as a bonus. <laughs> you know it's funny, Joe? What? The old man wants those plates more than anything in the world. And he'll never know they've already been delivered to me. <laughs>
Where's the old man? Resting. All right, Jimmy, take Miss Santiago to her room. What am I supposed to do there? Relax, make yourself at home, Joe. Too bad. she'll do just fine carl what happens to her when it's over she's to be killed what about forbes it's his idea the more proof we have that he ordered the old man's execution the more profit it'll be for all of us come on Thank you very much. The Riverside Police Area Unit spotted the helicopter about an hour ago. It's headed inland towards the San Bernardino Mountains there. That's it, Charles Lucas has a place in Big Bear. Caruso, you take the air unit and I'll coordinate the ground operations. Let's go. Sorry, Mr. Keegan would like you to stay in your room. Where is Mr. Keegan? I'm sorry, miss. Your room. Relax. Make yourself at home, said the spider to the fly. tell you? No. Well, I guess he saw no reason to. Bring my bags. Just a moment. Yes? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm looking for Joe Santiago. Who are you? I'm a good friend of hers. And who are you? I didn't hear your answer. Sorry, what was the question again? Simple. I asked who you were. Is there a prize for the right answer? It's what you get for the wrong one you better worry about. Like, uh, being a cop? Calling me names isn't going to get you anywhere. <laughs> well, then maybe this will. I was hoping we could talk this over. <laughs> no, we're all through talking. Just when we were getting to know each other. What happened? 
found out. That's what happened. What? I said he found out. I had to stop him. Time out. What if someone else knows, too? Perhaps we should forget about it, Lloyd. No, we're committed. There's no backing out. Well, the old man's bodyguard's been taken care of. All right, good. It's all up to you now, Joe. All you have to do is pull the trigger. He's in his room. I'll show you. Sure, the rest of you men know we have a police officer in there. I was just going to send for it. Oh. I arranged for a little snack to be sent up. Caviar, champagne, good music. I hope you like opera. Yes, La Boheme's my favorite. Good. If it weren't for us, I'm afraid Mr. Piccini would have a difficult time finding an audience around here. I know what you mean. <laughs> Joe, I, um, I think I finally met my match. You're even a better horse trader than I am. You can tell Alan Forbes I accept his deal. Mr. Lucas, the only deal Alan Forbes had in mind was to kill you. And he made that with Lloyd Keegan. <laughs> what are you talking about, Joe? My name isn't Joe, Mr. Lucas. It's Christy Love, LAPD. I don't understand. Joe Santiago had an accident at the airport. I took her place. To kill me? To find out whom she was here to contact. I didn't learn about the plan to kill you until just a little while ago. I don't believe this. I don't believe any of it. Mr. Lucas, if you didn't believe it, you wouldn't be going toward that gun in your desk. Keegan. How could he do this to me? I treated him like a son. Yeah, well, I guess that's what they call the old generation gap. Now, are you going to sit around here feeling sorry for yourself? Or do you want to try and find a way to get out of this mess? How many men are still on my side? You're looking at them. Listen, under ordinary circumstances, I wouldn't ask this, but um, is there a back way out of this place? that there were some poachers around here. There's no poachers around here. This is private property. Ah, huh, okay. If, uh, if you say so. What's taking you so long? Maybe she double-crossed us.
Nice of you to drop by. Don't mention it. I was just in the neighborhood. Come on, let's go. Mr. Lucas, I presume? Lieutenant Reardon, you're under arrest. That's my line, sugar. Let's go. <gasps> Bye, bird. counterfeit place before the treasury people picked them up. We found them in Keegan's safe. They'd never been used. Well, maybe we ought to try them out, just to make sure they're the right ones. They're a little late, Chris. They already checked it out. Oh, by the way, the Bahamian government would like to thank you personally for helping to crack the Forbes organization. The Santiago and Lucas testimony will put Forbes away for a long time. They'd like you to spend two carefree weeks in the Bahamas at their expense. <laughs> when do I leave? You don't. It's against regulations. But how about a few days in the San Fernando Valley? What? Here's a robbery this morning. Bon voyage. I'll drop you a line. Maybe. Ice cream. 